Pastor Dr. Reginald Van Stevens. What does it mean to persevere? If I'm calling on you, if I'm encouraging you to persevere, what does it mean to persevere? How is it possible to persevere in the faith given what we have to be faced with today? And all of us are faced with something. All of us are, are tempted by something. All of us, are, 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 the devil is trying to discourage us with something to get us to fall away from the faith. But how is it possible to do it? Regardless of whether you have ongoing hardships or the devil trying to pull you in a different direction or by worldly standards you're comfortable and you honestly have gotten successful because you know there are all kinds of distractions. But how can I persevere, Pastor? First thing you got to be is determined to follow Christ. Don't ever estimate determination. Hold to your Christian convictions. You can do it. The devil says you can't, but yes, you can. You can hold to your Christian convictions despite all of the other kinds of things that are designed to discourage you. Even when Jesus was on earth in the flesh, there were some who were first excited about being his disciples, who eventually decided to distance themselves or fall away from him. Why? Because of the requirements of his words. Let me give you one good example. In John 6, he says, if you won't follow me, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. They said, oh. They didn't remain long enough to learn what he meant with his metaphorical expression. He was talking about or teaching about how to have real life and be sustained in this life's journey. They were just finishing up a talk, if you go back and read John 6, about the manna that God sent down from heaven to get his people through the wilderness. You got to keep stuff in context. Some people fall away from the faith because they don't stay long, around long enough to find out what you're really talking about, what is really behind it. They take things out of context. And when it's taken out of context, the devil can mess you up. How many people you know have left the church because something they taken out of its context, its proper context? And, they, and the devil got you just like that. Today, a few fall away because they don't understand completely what they are hearing as simply requirements of the faith. They don't stay long enough to learn what they don't immediately understand because they don't allow the word of God to become deeply rooted in themselves. If you want to stay, you got to be determined. If you want to persevere, you got to be convicted and convinced. Welcome to the White Rock Baptist Church Worship Experience. Led by our dynamic pastor, the Reverend Dr. Reginald Van Stevens, we invite you to join us each and every Sunday as we welcome the world to Christ. If you're in Durham, North Carolina, we'd love to have you join us in person on Sundays at 9.15 a.m. for a wonderful time in worship and in the Word. At White Rock, we believe that families are strengthened and lives are transformed through service and proclamation of this gospel. Our Wednesday seasons of prayer and Bible discovery classes will empower and equip you to serve the Lord. But that's not all. We have dozens of ministries to meet the needs of White Rock members in the surrounding community. Our ministries for children, teens, women, men, and couples enrich the lives of those inside and outside the church. 
White Rock Ministries provide food to those in need, support those dealing with life challenges and grief, and create opportunities to discover and grow in God's collective purpose for our lives. For specific details on our ministries, prayer times, and Bible studies, please visit www.whiterockbaptistchurch.org. Thank you for spending time with us today, and we look forward to seeing you again as we persevere in the faith.
Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Now let us pray. Let every head be bowed and every eye closed. Dear Lord and our God, thank you for your promise to us that when two or three are gathered, you are in the midst. Lord, we welcome you among us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon us. We ask that you open our ears so that we can hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your guidance and open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Lord, we thank you for this couple's weekend and service. We thank you for the gift of marriage and for your knowledge and wisdom to guide us. And moreover, we thank you for creating both male and female and giving us the breath of life. And we dedicate this worship service to you. For you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy to be praised. We pray this prayer in the glorious name of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, let the church say, Amen. Good morning, White Rock Baptist Church. My name is Valerie Merriweather, and I, along with my amazing groom and husband, Deacon Kurt Merriweather, are thrilled to welcome you to our Couples Sunday, the culmination of our Couples Ministry Retreat. Our ministry, the Couples Ministry, is based on two scriptures, and I'll read them for you briefly. Coming from Mark 10, 9 and 1 Peter 4 through 8, or 4, 8. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Before I begin, I'd like to recognize some incredible power couples. As I call your name, can you please stand? The core ministry team, the couples ministry, Vaughn and Valerie McMillan, Carrie and Natalie Ely, and Deacon Albert and Rachelle Baptist. <laughs> Next, I'd like to thank the hospitality ministry under the direction of Deaconess Martha Lester Harris. 
If you could please stand. Leon Carter. Leon Carter with the Ministry Support Cluster. He's up above waving. Thank you. And, DJ, and to TJ Bridgers for leading the Couples Ministry Choir. One of the best things that happened to us early in our marriage was an invitation. An invitation to participate in a couple's ministry function. We didn't know it at the time, but that invitation changed our life and began the transformation of our marriage. Some activities we did that inform what we do today are things like couples rap sessions, fellowship outings, and what we did this weekend, a couple's retreat, where we learned an eye-opening definition of submission by our very own Pastor Stevens. We learned communication strategies and how to thrive in our marriage by seasoned experts, Dr. Martell and Dr. Irene Perry, Mac and Sue Jarman, Eugene and Linda Curtin. Like we discussed yesterday, while you're building your network in various spaces like your career and various circles that you're in, it's essential to build a couple's network to encourage you, support you, and come a lot alongside you in every season. I don't have a whole lot to add. Uh, if you're married to a fantastic woman, there's not much you need to do other than realize that you don't deserve what you have. One of the things that I do want to say, though, is that in addition to what Valerie was saying about how transformational being involved in couples ministry was, family is God's idea. Marriage is God's idea. And while marriage is challenging, it can be better if you surround yourself with people who have been where you're trying to go. And if we look up here on the rostrum, if we look at the wonderful, y'all look so wonderful, by the way, and purple in the middle here. But if you're engaged and you're looking to do the right things as you get into marriage, if you're just starting out in your marriage, if you need a tune-up, if you need a refreshment, the couples ministry can help because we had fun. We helped uh, share some things that we didn't know about one another. And we talked about how transformational couples ministry has been in our own marriages, but also in the lives of our kids, our grandchildren, there's so much that God wants to do with our ministry. The couple's ministry is an important part of the life of White Rock Baptist Church, and we just encourage you, whether it's uh, a bowling night, a rap session, what we had this week, get involved because there's so much we want to be able to share so that we can build the church that God intends for us to build. So just want to thank you so much for all your participation. I uh, want to invite more folks to come. And I'm excited about what God is going to do in the rest of the service. Amen.
Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Amen. Good morning. I'm going to be reading from Ephesians 5, uh, verse 31 through 33. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and that the two shall be one flesh. This is the great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. Amen. Thank God for his word. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father God, for the example of the union between you and the church, Father God. God, we thank you for this celebration of marriage, God. Celebration of hope for tomorrow's couples. Celebration, Father God, of those that would do your will, God. God, we thank you for those that have worked diligently, God, to do your work, Father God, to stand on a hill and that others might see the light, Father God, that you have set within them. So, God, now we ask you, God, to mend any relationships, any broken hearts, Father God. Things, God, that we've struggled with in our lives, Father God, we ask you, God, to lift us up right now. God, that we lose sight of ourselves, God, and that we would worship you like never before. God, we pray for the couples, Father God, that are gathered here to get today, God, that the enemy will never win, will never have a ground to stand on. And God, that the union that exists between man and his wife, Father God, we just ask you to bind it in your love. And when the world doesn't understand, Father God, the light will stand through us. They will see you through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To be here. My name is Minister <laughs> Cynthia Stevens. You all just don't know how glad I am to be here with you today. You all are beautiful. We bring you greetings from Jacksonville, Florida. I know it's raining outside, but the sun is shining in here. And we are going to praise the Lord today. <laughs> to my pastor, Pastor Stevens, a man I respect and love. I am grateful to have met him, to be a part of our life. And to all the ministers here on the platform, uh, my name again is Cynthia Stevens. I am here to introduce the speaker this morning. But I am truly blessed to be here today. Uh, we have truly missed you all, and we continue to cherish the relationships and joy that we have shared here. Uh, our speaker today, he is a graduate from Savannah State University. Um, his graduate studies include uh, University of Florida and Northern Baptist Theological Seminary. He had a calling on his life in February 1994, and at this time, that time, he accepted the call to ministry. He was assistant pastor at Mount Zion Baptist Church in Joliet, uh, Illinois. His passion has always been in Christian education. In 2017, though God's, through God's prompting, we found our way to White Rock Baptist Church and joined under the leadership of Pastor Reginald Van Stevens. He served in the capacity as associate minister here where he preached and taught. Our lives have never been the same. He, had, he has a motivational speaking company called Raising the Roof Communications. 
speaking at many venues. Even he spoke at NCAA. AA. Um, and in his spare time, he has written two books, uh, Lessons from Miss Maddie and Leave a Mark. I met this man after he asked my sister for my phone number. <laughs> he was looking for a place to give away some medical supplies um, to an organization. He knew I was a nurse, so he wanted to get my phone number. I think that was the reason. Uh, well, we talked for a long time that day, and he asked me to lunch, and uh, he treated me like a real lady, and that always continues to stay in my heart, and I was impressed with that. But I had a little problem. His car looked okay, his clothes were good, but that mustache, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, that looks pretty rough. So, well, <laughs> after trimming the mustache, the rest is history. <laughs> we are a blended family, which has its own challenges. But thanks be to God, love prevails. Amen. Uh, we have been married for 27 years in May. Yes. He loves to travel. He loves to laugh and spend time with family. Some of his favorite foods are boiled peanuts, watermelon, and blue crab. <laughs> we com complement each other and strive to keep life exciting as we embrace each season of marriage. I introduce to some and present to others the sugar in my iced tea, <laughs> my encourager, and someone I truly love. I am so proud to call him my husband. Reverend Rufus Butch Stevens. God bless you all. Walking the light, beauty for light, come where the dew drops.
of the world. An old song with eternal proclamation. I love that one. That took me back to Tremont Temple Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. Y'all join me in prayer. Almighty God, we come this morning, Father, and we just say thank you. Oh God, we're so privileged to come to a privileged place, Lord God, at your feet, Father. Thank you for this morning, this, this couple's morning, Lord God. Thank you for life itself, Lord God. Now, Lord God, this preacher is nothing without you. So against your purpose, by your power, for your pleasure, do what you're going to do today, Lord God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
Well, good morning. Uh, my wife said some real nice things about me this morning. And I was sitting there thinking, I said, baby, there's something shiny in your future. <laughs> she said it all in terms of us missing y'all. We miss you like crazy. I, I thought of that, um, that old line. I think it was, must have been um, Duke Ellison. They used to say, I love you madly. That's kind of where we are with you. If you're just driving along one day and your ears start burning, we talk about you. And we thank you for the privilege to be here. Pastor, thank you for this opportunity to share your place of appointment, this, pul this pulpit. Thank you. Uh, I know associate ministers who have been in churches two years and never preach yet, so it's not an automatic. And Pastor is, is, is very free with his pulpit. I should say, once you vet it, once he know you can preach. <laughs> to all of the ministers here, my brothers and sisters here who share the, uh, the wonderful task of proclaiming Jesus Christ to the masses, um, to all of you, my father's children, um, who we love so much, um, well, there's about three or four of you, we still, the jury's still out, but you know, we... I want to take a moment here, and then I'll go on and, and, and lift up very high um, Brother Kurt and Sister Valerie Merriweather. They don't know it, but I am the self-appointed president of the Merriweather Fan Club. <laughs> and this retreat, we were there yesterday, and I told them when I got done, I saw two things that, 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 that stood out for me. I saw um, cordiality and I saw competence. Yeah. I saw serious professionalism. Because, yeah. you know, and I'll just say it, sometimes in church stuff, we, t we take the short routes and stuff looks raggedy and tacky. Top drawer. So couples, if you miss this one, don't miss the next time. When you see, hear them talking about another one, go ahead and write a check. Uh, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> so the, the scripture for this morning was already read and was taken from Genesis uh, 224. And it says, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. So that in the economy of God, one plus one equals one. Oh, and that talks real good in church. That talks real good in church until he has left the bottle cap off the salad dressing and you shake and you got stuff all over you. You ain't feeling like one then, are you? And I chose that one because my twin brother did that, and his wife was covered in Italian dressing. So sometimes we know one plus one equals one, but sometimes it doesn't feel, feel like one. But we can get there from here, and that's what this message is about this morning. This message is in topical form. The, the scripture that I just read and was read earlier, I want you to see that as just the umbrella for this message because there'll be several scriptures as I go along. Because of the nature of this marriage celebration, my message will obviously be directed toward couples, but if you are not a couple, there's a lot of meat in here for you too. Now with the couples in mind, I have chosen the sermonic title for my message today, After the Rice. After the rice. Well, you know the scene well. Beautiful venue with the wedding party decked out in sartorial splendor. Musicians and singers are all in their places. Photographers and videographers are at the ready. The man of God stands next to the groom as the wedding begins. A wonderful program transpires. The final note of this awesome occasion 
is the pronouncement of the wedded couple, husband and wife. Stay with me. Smiles of plenty as the rice flies. There's no shortage of rice as a couple makes their way out of the venue. But as many of you know, after the caterer has been paid, after the maker of the wedding cake has been paid, after the DJ has been paid, after the, the limousine company has gotten its check, and after the preacher has been tipped, That's when marriage begins. Right. Well, you know what I'm talking about. After you've gotten out of those tight-fitting clothes and you've returned the tuxedo and the shiny shoes, after you have picked the last of the rice from your teeth and you have finally got the electric slide out of your head, that's when marriage starts. From that point on, it becomes a day-to-day -day measure of your commitment to one another. All right. This message seeks to celebrate both your unions and your ongoing commitments to one another. It also seeks to highlight some significant areas in your relationship. And I want to finish up my message today by talking to some of you would-be married folks, folks who've got marriage in view. You ain't there, but you can see it from there. This morning, I want to address what I believe to be three significant areas of marriage lives that are critical to the success of a marriage. They are not exhaustive, but there are three that I chose. The first one is communication. Yeah. Where's the mystery, right? When asked about the most important thing in marriage, communication always places near the top. This is probably the most important com uh, component of a relationship. Communication means being able to express your thoughts and feelings, needs and desires to your partner, and also being able to hear from them about the same thing. Yeah. Now, the Bible is real clear about how we ought to communicate with one another. The tool that we communicate with the most is that ever faithful tongue. And James got a lot to say about the tongue. Oh, yeah. James 3, 5 talks about this irrepressible tongue. It says the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Yeah. 3, 6 goes on to say that the tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. Look out, y'all. Sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire from hell. How about that? This message makes an especially strong case for married believers. So consider this, these perspectives. First of all, for married folks, we are union in marriage. We, we went before the preacher, said I do. We are married. Yeah. Secondly, we are, have a union in faith. We've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. Yes. We are, thirdly, joint heirs with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. And the same spirit, this is number four, and the same spirit that indwells me indwells Cynthia. Yeah. Yeah. All with a view toward walking in righteousness. So to me, James 3 screams for marital harmony. Screams for a oneness in the household. And so, saved couples, you don't have an out, but you do have help. Yeah. Yeah. James 1.19 is crystal clear about the nature of these tongue-generated communi communication. Let me just, to make sure I'm on the right street, let me see the hands of everybody that said some married folks, everybody, or once was married even, <laughs> that ever said something you wish you could have called back in marriage. I would remind you, you're in church. Yeah, all of us. 
This is an unruly thing. And so James is, is, is speaking to us. But there's a passage of scripture in 1 9. I remember when I first uh, heard it, it just it screamed to me. James said, My dear brothers, take note, of, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. You know where I'm going. Slow to speak and slow to become angry. Verse 20 gives us the reason why. It says, Human anger does not produce the righteousness. God desires. Yeah. Let me give you a further note for the, to you would-be um, communicators. We all have arguments, don't we? If you've been married 15 minutes, argument is right around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> It is what it is. We are two different people. We have different agendas and all that kind of stuff. But I would say to you, and I heard a story. I, I think I shared it here one time, but I want to share it again today. When you got an argument, make sure when it's over, it's over. Yeah, yeah. Make sure it's over. And so you nod your head. But let me share a story with you, and maybe it will underscore what I'm saying to you. Story is told about an old lady that got arrested for shoplifting. She was to have her day in court. And so she was making her way to court with her husband in the car, and they have an argument. And it's a doozy. They get over it, she thinks. They get to court. The judge calls her up and says, I see you've been arrested for shoplifting. And she said, yes. And he said, what'd you shoplift? She said, a can of peaches. He said, why would you do that? He said, Your Honor, I left my wallet home. I was hungry. I just ate the peaches. He said, how many peaches were in the can? She said, nine. He said, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you nine days in jail. One day for every peach. And he raised the gavel to close out the case. And her husband stood up. And he said, Your Honor, can I say something? And she said, uh, the judge said, what do you have to add? He said, she took a can of peas, too. Say again, when it's over, make sure it's over. You know, we get, we get so fired up. Sometimes we say, and we have to, we have to catch ourselves. We can, we, we can say stuff that we can't call back, we can't come back home from. Every married couple knows that there's, there's soft spots in the marriage. We just don't talk about that. I, I don't go there on a negative thing. That's got the potential for great damage. You can say stuff that all I'm sorry babies in the world can't get you home again. You, just do, you, you, you stay together, but you live in a different reality. We are better than that. We have the spirit of living God living indwelling us, and we are better than that. So how can we check ourselves against what I call this overspeak? The first one, I think, is what I call um, tongue modification. Proverbs 15, 1a says, a gentle answer turns away wrath. You ain't got to give as good as you get. No, you didn't say that. Now furniture is moving in the house. A gentle answer turns away wrath. Anybody ever did that? Gave somebody better than they gave you, and you watched them shift, their whole personality shift? Well, nine of y'all did it. The other thing that I would suggest that you do is to become others-oriented. And that's what Philippians 2, 3, and 4 talks about. 
says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the other. How good is it if you're always seeing him better than you? Are you seeing her better than you? I said, Cynthia, you know, baby, I, I got this. And she said, no, baby, I got this. And so we just climb and we're in a wonderful kind of place as we, our perspective for one another just heightens. That's a good place to be when you see somebody better than you. That, that checks our tongues. It checks our hearts that start beating and we're ready to get mad and takes us to a place where our tongues are given vent. That keeps us from going there. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, under, under communication, the last thing I want to just share with you, and I just believe this with everything in me. If you don't, you need to start. And that's something I call shared laughter. Shared laughter. Some of y'all ain't laughed since 62. There is value in laughter. Somebody says the, the, the shortest distance between married folks is laughter. Anybody ever been arguing and you don't realize how silly the argument is and both of y'all started laughing? If you can't find nothing to laugh at, go get some. I got a, um, on YouTube, I have found, uh, it's, a, it's called Dry Bar. And they have stand-up comedians with clean comedy. And so I go, when I, I want to laugh, we go get a laugh. Cynthia and I have stuff right now, and I won't say it because y'all have to help her upstairs. She'll be laughing so hard. But we have things in our life that if I mention to her right now, she will turn red back there and start laughing. Shared laughter. It's like a vitamin every day. Find something to laugh about. Life ain't that serious. <laughs> and, and on behalf of the men, y'all don't have to be laughing at us either. Baby, I know you ain't wearing them sandals and them, and them um, athletic socks out to, by the church. <laughs> we ain't got to be the object of your human. There's a lot to laugh about. I, I care about that, but that's serious business. Laughter is therapeutic. Yes. More so between couples. Yes. Don't you know the enemy wants you torn apart? Right. Wants you another statistic? Especially if you, they save folks and they, 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 they divorce. Oh, my God. And so we fight against that. We use the tools that the word of God has given us yeah. to go further. Yeah. So now, the first area was communication. The second is trusting one another. Yeah. Proverbs 31, 11 says, her husband can trust her, yeah. and she will greatly enrich his life. Here it's talking about women, but of course it's, it can go both ways. So what are the benefits of trust? Trust provides peace. When I know I can trust you, I'm at peace. Yes. Trust promotes closeness. We, when we drop the walls of suspicion, intimacy has a way to get in. Yes. Trust provides Safety. Each person feels safe when a mate, where, her, where his or her mates are, um, are concerned. I have, a, I have a real good friend. In fact, her ex-husband was also my real, very good friend. We were having dinner one night a couple of years ago. And she said, Rufus, it got so bad that I would put my check in the bank on Thursday, go pick up Friday morning, go pick up, go to pick up for 40, 50 bucks in cash in my pocket, and be told I was overdrawn. Because he gambled and drank. Trust, critically important. So how is trust manifested in a marriage? How, how does it trust play out? Well, first of all, trust shows itself as being accountable. Somebody who's trustworthy is also accountable. I, 
Cynthia, I blew it. Rufus, who did this? Same for two of us living in the house. I guess it was me. <laughs> but you know, my, my option is, I don't know. Somebody broke in last night and broke that. I don't, I don't know. But the point is, when, when we own up to stuff, what did you tell your kids growing up? Don't you lie to me. You own up to it. I'll wear you out, but you don't lie to me. It, 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 even more so in marriage. Own up to it. I think trust flourishes. In fact, when you own up to it before she found out about it, before he found out about it, listen, let me tell you what happened. Because you don't know what happened yet, and blah, blah, blah. It's the case. It's a wonderful place to be. Trust also builds respect between one another. Yes. Yeah. The, in, in fact, because I respect her, she, she can trust that we would never be in any kind of situation talking, and I would expose something that would embarrass her. She ain't never got to worry about that. I ain't never got to worry about that. Now, I wish I could tell you, I knew some, I know some folks who never had to worry a word about it, but I do know people that did. I've, I've heard some wives say something. I, I'm, I'm saying, I know you ain't saying, there's 10 people up in here, I know you ain't saying that about him. He doesn't want to cuss it out in front of us, so he's looking at his shoes. But trust is decimated. I can't trust you to open your mouth because every time you do, I'm at risk. This woman opens up her mouth on me, I'm cheesing. I'm grinning because she's saying good stuff. I was speaking to the Chamber of Com Commerce in a city outside of Chicago. Cynthia was there, we were dating. And she was up front. She wasn't saying nothing, but her mouth was, her face was screaming, get him, baby. Get him good. Building trust is huge. Trust grows when we honor our, our mates, when we lift them up, when we show gratitude for them. Cynthia left the house last week, I think it was. She'd been going eight minutes. I get a text, and I will read you the text. The text says, hey, I forgot to tell you before I left. Thanks for being my friend. We're 27 years together next month. And we're still talking like that. Somebody say amen. <laughs> <laughs> and she knows she can trust me. I would take a bullet for this woman. I'm hoping I never have to live up to that promise, but I... <laughs> And brothers, y'all can thank me too because I know y'all feel the same way. You take a bullet for it, but baby, don't call me on it. I had, a, in, in preparing this message, I have a friend. Just a, just a cool guy. We've been friends now about two years. I met him in church back in Illinois. And he has an assignment at an executive hotel in Delhi, India. And I tell him all the time, I say, God bless you. And he said, man, ain't he, ain't he blessing. But he... He and his wife, they're from New Orleans, and they're very close. And she had a birthday, and so he lifted her up on Facebook. Uh, and I want to read you his post. His name is Greg Jones. His wife, his name is Tangie. They're from New Orleans. And Greg said, good morning, Facebook family and friends. Please join me in wishing my beautiful, talented, loving, caring, and did I say amazingly beautiful wife a happy birthday. You're not just my wife. You're not just the mother of my kids. You're not just my bright light. You are my wish come true. You are what motivates and encourages me to be my best. I wish you happiness, love, joy, and pray that the Lord continues to allow you to be a blessing to many, for many years to come. And what I like about that is that you know, any of us can write a note to our, our, our mate, but he put it out there. He put it on Front Street, as y'all say. Everybody knew that he was crazy about tangent. 
And Tangier knew that he done told everybody that he created by Tangier. That speaks volumes in the relationship. It builds trust. I don't worry about her. I know I'm always built up. <laughs> we had a, um, we, we joined a new church. It was a while after we left here. We were in a church. But we, in a Sunday school class, and I liked teaching, but I didn't have an opportunity. So we attended this Sunday school class, and after class was over, somebody came over. One of the teachers came over and shook our hands and all. And uh, we thanked the guy for class and everything else. My wife, in the next breath, said, my husband is a great teacher. <laughs> Guess who got a phone call two weeks later from the same guy? Saying, you know, I'd like to have you teach. She, she, there have been people that I was at odds with. Guy up the street, I ain't speaking to him, he ain't speaking to me. Cynthia spoke to him, now everybody's speaking. <laughs> Trust, wonderful place to be. So we talked about communication. We talked about trust between one another. And I'm going to close out with talking about trusting God for each other. Oh, yeah. And, and when you talk about that, to me, the one word you just screams out to me is prayer. Prayer. Praying to God for your mate. Ephesians 6.18 encourages us by saying, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. We should be in constant prayer for our spouses. Pray prayers of gratitude for such a wonderful spouse. I could have done a lot worse. Some of y'all too. Pray that your husband or wife will be will anchor their faith. That will they grow in, in their, their, uh, their faith walk with God? Pray that your love would go. Well, we've been together 25 years. I told her I love her back in 92. No, pray that your love would grow. I'm, I'm going to park the car a second because I, I see some people. I'm an incurable romantic. I see some guys get out the car. They're half a block away. Wife ain't even left the car yet. She could have been hijacked to Cuba. He wouldn't have known until he looked back. Oh man, this, this, this is her. Right. Be in constant prayer for your wife, for your husband, yes. that your love would grow. Yes. Everybody in here who was married knows that the, the, the way you are, and this was what the retreat was kind of about, where you are in love now is not where you were when you first got together. That's right. Yes, back here was ooh, baby, baby love. Yes. Now is love here that, that, that's more substantial. I don't know what my life would be if you weren't here. Right. Okay. Pray that God would be in the struggles. And there will be struggles. Amen, married folks? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord, I don't want to say something out of sorts. I, I, I love this man. I love this woman. Help me. Keep me where you want me to be. Because left of my, talking about Rufus, now left of my own devices, I ain't going to look like nobody's preacher. But I ain't where God wants me to be. Praying for one another. Yeah. Celebrating one another. You know, I, I tell um, married couples when in, in premarital counseling, nobody should brag about your spouse more than you. You ought to be the constant celebration point for that man or that woman. Nobody should be able, be able to say anything to lift them up better than you. And that's an intentionality. That's something you want, you decided you want to do. Now, once you've done all these prayers, then you got to do what's hard for, for us to do is to let God be God. Now, he told you in, this, in Scripture, Psalm says, be still and know what? That I am God. Oh, yeah. Translated from the RSV, 
the Rufus Stevens version, go sit down somewhere. I got this. This is what God is saying. God is saying, know that I know your struggles. I know that stuff. I know your heartache. I got you. Know that my heart is always inclined toward you. I loved you before you was you. Know that I have plans for you. Plans to prosper you. Never to harm you. Plans for hope and a future. There should never be a time in the life of married folks when we're not praying for our spouses. Now, as I close, I have a final word for those of you who are not married yet, want to be married, can't see married over the ridge, but want to be married. People out here telling you, um, girl, you better forget about that. No, man, forget about that. Ain't, ain't nothing there. Well, you ain't God. Somebody who Cynthia and I love told Cynthia, ain't no more good men out there. They didn't know Rufus. <laughs> People just pump poison. They don't want to see you happy. You say, it's okay for me to, 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 to want a nice guy, a nice woman. It's okay. But you're so busy pumping poison, you, you can't applaud me. Let, me. let me share this story with you. And it's the last story of the morning. <laughs> it's a story that's close to me. And, and I asked the person before I, I'm sharing it with you if I could share it. You know, you look at some people's lives and you think, well, that's it for them. Well, I have a sister. Her name is Laverne. You, she was here one years ago. And Laverne had... She is a, one sister and four brothers, so she was a centerpiece of our siblingry. And Laverne hadn't been married. And then she got married, and it was an awful marriage. Awful marriage. I remember talking to her one summer, and I wasn't sure I would ever talk to her again. It was that kind of awful. Had no children, but watch how God works. She goes on, she said, well, you know what? <laughs> I ain't never doing this again. She got out of it, she said, I ain't never doing this. Come on, going on with her life. Well, I don't want to tell you the whole story because it takes too long. But anyway, the long and short of it is, we have an aunt that lives in South Florida, and my sister used to visit her all the time. Across the street was a, a family that my aunt was um, friendly with, and my sister got to meet them all. Well, the lady of that house, uh, had cancer, and she was dying. My sister was taking care of my mother at the time, who was near death. And one day, the lady of the house called my sister and her husband to her bedside and said, I'm dying, and he's a good man, and he's going to need a wife. Your mother's dying. You're going to need a husband. And she functionally put them together. Wow. It got better. My sister got married. I have three brothers. Each one of my brothers brought my sister a third of the way down the aisle to me, and I officiated the wedding. Uh -huh. I was telling somebody, she was a mess by the time she got down there. <laughs> she never had any children. The man she married had a daughter who was on crack, had a baby was a crack baby. So when her husband came, granddaddy, he brought a little girl who would become my sister's daughter at age seven. She grows up, goes to college, honor student, married a serious Navy man who was, a, who was in the service, and they live in Hampton, Virginia. And they have seriously on fire for Christ. They have six children. Um, Amazing. I, don't, I think they might be 30. But the, the point is, is that, and if you talk to my sister, if you met my sister this morning, just, you know, relax. Because she's going to show you every grandchild picture she got. 
But the whole point of the story, she wasn't supposed to be married again, right? She said, I ain't married again. So those of you who hear from these the poison pumpers, just, just discount them. Let God in this, God's running this thing. He say, I know the plans I have for you. I, I hope you hear that story because it's easy for me to tell because I lived it, but it's really against all norms when you think about it. But God told you, didn't he? He said, uh, my thoughts, mm, my ways don't look nothing like no, your ways. So I, oper I operate in a way that, that will c confound you. So those of you who are looking to be married, trust God for, in the process. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, I hope I've provided some useful stuff for the married folks, but I'm in the part of the sermon where the rubber meets the road. Old preachers used to tell young preachers, get to Jesus as soon as you can. <laughs> Took me a while to get here, but I'm here now. Yeah. There's somebody in here today that doesn't know Christ. Yeah. There's somebody here who's given the preacher your hand, but you haven't lived out any life in Christ. Right, right, right. All of that can happen this morning. You can come and own Christ for your own. Confess him as Lord and you shall, and, and, and believe that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. It's just that simple. I don't know how many Sundays I sat in church gripping the back of the pew and not moving when I should have. I just pray that somebody here feels the prompt of the Holy Spirit right now to come and give God your life or renew your life this day with him. Won't you come now? God bless you all. Let's give God the praise for the message we heard from the preacher this morning. bless the name of Jesus and we welcome you to Christ. If you are in attendance today and you've never received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, we want you to allow the Holy Spirit to move you out from those pews and unite with us, the body of Christ. And You need a church home and we invite you to come. This is the time to do it. We want you to come give your life to Christ Unite with this congregation. And if you're listening by way of stream, we want you to know that you too are welcome to become a part of this, this very, very serious ministry here at White Rock Baptist Church here in Durham, North Carolina. All you need to do is give us a call. But the door of this church are always open at all times for anyone who wants to come to Christ, not just in this moment, but always the doors are open to you. Come on, choir. Come on, choir.
I want to ask you, as, as you continue to, to play, I'm going to ask the musician to continue to, to play. One of the objectives of this couple's ministry, this marriage ministry, because we realize even within the body of Christ, there are a number of marriages that need strengthening. You know, one of the things we say in our goal statement of White Rock Baptist Church, exalt the name of Jesus Christ through our worship and our strengthening of families. And we know that there are several of us who need strengthening in our marriage. We know there are couples that need healing. We need to bring our spouses to Christ. We need to bring our spices, our spouses to worship with us, to sit with us, even just to hold our hands in worship and allow Christ to take hold of our home life. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me as we pray all together. God, we thank you for this weekend of celebrating marriage here in the White Rock Baptist Church. We thank you for all of these wonderful couples that are representative within this body of Christ. The wonderful blessings that you placed in their homes and in their hearts. We thank you for blessing their, their children, the grandchildren. And now, God, we know that there are still among us marriages that need strengthening. In fact, all of our marriages need strengthening, but some more than others. Our prayer to you today is that you help these relationships among us that need your presence and your strength. Spouses that need to be closer together. The reigniting of love and trust. The need for communication. The need to trust you in all things. Now move upon spouses to begin a fresh walk with you. Help them see the value of worshiping you together in this place. To hold hands together, to smile together, to laugh together, to share again the intimacy of being pure in Christ. We thank you for the blessings of security, stability, and love. We know that all things are possible with you. So we want to thank you in advance for the marvelous way that you'll move in homes and in hearts. Thank you for this preacher, this man of God, his spouse along his side, all these who are gathered here in this place. Thank you for my wife, my my companion, thank you for all these couples who are here today. Bless them even more than before. In Jesus' name, let's say together, amen. I love you. I, come on, everybody. I love you. you up and I magnify Feel the praise. Put our hands, let's put our hands together and give God the praise. Amen. Amen.
my sanctuary. He is my safe place. He is my serene place. Um, he is everything to me. And I do thank God for him each and every day. Um, so we're before you now because we would like to encourage you to trust God. We would like to um, really tell you you need to be obedient to God um, and trust him and pay your tithes and your offerings, okay? The Lord does not require um, that we do much of anything, but he does, require, he does require that we trust him and he requires that we are obedient. And the word does tell us that we should bring the whole tithe uh, into his storehouse so that there would be meet in his house for everybody. That means if we all do our share, pay our 10%, or at least our 10%, then there's going to be enough for everybody. Okay, so there are multiple ways that you can give. Um, we can um, go online and pay through your bank or credit union. You can use PayPal. You can mail your contribution to the church. The address is 3400 Fayetteville Street, Durham, 27707. You can stop by during... Um, office hours and drop your offering off, you can call the church and ask for a trustee to come by and pick it up. You can use the Givelify app. Um, and then, of course, we have the basket seated up here um, for you to bring your offering if you are in worship this morning. Okay, so um, you know how you, when you know something and you tell somebody something that's like something good, you know, ladies, we know of a good sale. Um, once I found out that Harris Peter had dick shrimp on sale for five dollars or ten dollars, and I called Camilla and I said, "Camilla, Harris Peter got shrimp on sale for ten dollars." That's how this is about how I feel about telling you you need to pay your tithes. It's a good thing, okay? Um, this month we are celebrating observing Pastor's 29th anniversary, <laughs> and. We've got the basket up front. It's here. It's been up front all, all month. It'll be here through next Sunday. So you can also show Pastor how much we love and appreciate him for his years of dedication to us by um, bringing a card, a love offering, or whatever you desire, and place it in the basket. So now my good husband will offer a prayer. We're going to pray. <laughs> will you bow with me, please? Blessed Lord, our God, our Father, we do thank you. We ask, Lord, that we are able to walk in the light, the beautiful light, your light, Lord God. Only you, Father, can take one man and one woman and make one person. Amen. Only you, Lord God, can take a body of people and make them your church. Amen. Only you, Lord God, can ask for 10% from that body and build a building like this. So we're thanking you today, Lord God, for who you are and who you have always been. We ask that you bless everything that you have given us and bless that 10%, Lord, that you even asked long ago of Abel and Cain. You're still today only asking 10%. Help us, Lord God, to give that 10% cheerfully with a smile on our face. Help us, Lord God, to be about your business Amen. and your business only. We love you, Father. We thank you. And we're going to glorify your holy and your heavenly name. For it's in that name, the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen.
God good. Amen. And just smile at your neighbor and say, especially today. Especially today, God is good. Amen. Especially today. We thank God for the word that we received on today from, amen, Reverend Rufus Stevens. What a wonderful word. A word that can not only be applied to marriage, but to other relationships. Amen. We need to learn how to talk to one another, to everyone, and to trust others. Amen. And that will be pleasing to God. It's so good to be here and to be amongst other couples, and especially with my suntan Superman standing by my side. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. What a privilege. What a privilege. It's a blessed day, and every day, every day, we honor one another and couples, and certainly we learn, we're continuing to learn from one another in our marriage that will be five years next month. Isn't that great? Yeah. So we are blessing the Lord for this day and for all of you whom we get to see your smiling faces, and we want to make sure that we um, let the couples know that there's a special little gift item for you in the fellowship hall after worship, so don't scurry out yet. Make sure that you head downstairs to just get a little something that was uh, prepared by the Merriweathers and the marriage ministry. And we thank God for them once again. What a wonderful weekend. What a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to bless the couples. Amen. I think that's it all for me. And Pastor Stevens will take the rest. Pastor. Did you have anything else? Okay. I'm going to ask the planning committee of couples ministries, please stand. All of you involved in the planning of couples weekend, please stand. Give them a great hand. Wasn't it, hadn't it been a great weekend? Thank you so much. Let's stand. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Come on, everybody. Oh, let the church say amen. Let the church. Church. And now, may the grace of God, who is our divine creator, and the love of Jesus, who is the Christ and our Savior, and the abiding presence of his Holy Spirit, go with us to bless us. Bless us with his protection. Bless us with his prosperity. And bless us with his peace now and evermore and let the church say amen joining our worship experience. We look forward to seeing you again online next Sunday or in person at 915 in our sanctuary at 3400 Fayetteville Street, Durham, North Carolina. For information about White Rock Baptist Church, please visit our website at www.whiterockbaptistchurch.org or contact the church office at 919-688-8136. Until next time, may Christ Jesus continue to bless you and keep you until we meet again.